Walking south out of Concord, we come to a fork in the road. Taking the southwest path, we pass a car and notice these giant power lines overhead. Continuing farther, we see more power lines down to the left, and we spot just through these trees what looks like a green building. And as we approach, our dog finds an enemy, and we discover Gorski Cabin. Feral ghouls appear from all sides and rush to attack. After swiftly dealing with them, we find ourselves at the back of the cabin, next to this blue rusted picker-up truck and this odd-looking pipe coming out of the ground, almost as if it was an exhaust for an HVAC system or something like that. Walking around this side, we can now clearly see that these electrical towers go directly over the cabin. The cabin is obviously run down, but we see a couch sitting out front, and up on the deck we see a whiskey bottle and a nice little place to sit. Dogmeat opened the door there, revealing a feral ghoul who was sleeping on the mattress. After dealing with him, we can start on this left side with a small little kitchen set up, not much here, followed by the mattress, a chemistry station, another couch, and a small table with some jet on it. And in between these two, we see a root cellar. Seeing nothing else of interest in this small place, we can go ahead and enter. Climbing down, we find ourselves in a small dark room, filled mostly with empty shelves and bits of junk and scraps strewn about. We find a toolbox on one shelf, as well as an ammo container continuing on, and we pass by a refrigerator to see more empty shelves, a couple of bags of cement, and a few worthwhile items on these shelves. We also find a tub here with a toaster inside, luckily no skeleton, and to the right we see a weapons workbench. So this was definitely a small workshop for whoever lived in this cabin. Seeing this refrigerator moved, we notice there are wires and pipes on the ceiling. These wires on the ceiling continue all the way back to the hatch and forward through this passageway. Now this refrigerator looks as if it was almost placed here as, as it was blocking this pathway until somebody pushed it out of the way. So continuing through here, we can follow the wires to find some ductwork. Continuing on, we see there is electricity as we come up to this door here. Now this looks like a very permanent structure built in here. We find a toilet as well as a radio, and as dog meat once again opens the door, we find ourselves Wayne Gorsi. Entering the small room, we immediately start to take radiation, so we have to limit our exposure in here. But starting on our left, we see the Wasteland Survival Guide. Diamond City is now permanently marked on our map. I like the cover here, a bunch of gravestones leading all the way to Diamond City. We then see a bottle cap mine next to this personal terminal that we'll get back to, some junk on the shelves, a couple of posters, as well as all of these barrels. As we come to the middle of the workshop here, we find a disassembled mini nuke with an extra beryllium cap and other spare parts. Now seeing all this down here raises many questions, so turning around we can finally take a look at this personal terminal. Sweet. After hacking inside we see only one entry, Statement of Intent. This will be my first and only entry. I identify myself as a free-thinking citizen of these once great United States. I will not stand idly by as the government infects the minds of its people with devices such as the, quote, electrical tower they've erected in my front lawn. I pledge to take down this mind control device by any means necessary and have begun construction on an incendiary device. If you're reading this, I have certainly been killed or detained in a government interrogation camp. The news will surely warp the truth and brand me a communist traitor. Do not believe their lies. Let all true patriots know that what I do, I do out of my own free will and for the good of my country. 
With all the pieces, we now understand what happened. This man, Wayne Gorski, had a power pylon placed in his front yard. So opposed to it, he set about making his own incendiary device to attempt to take it down. He was unable to complete his plans due to the bombs dropping, which is why over 200 years later we still find the power pylon standing in his front yard. The story of Wayne Gorski has many parallels to a man in our own timeline. A man named Ted Kaczynski, or as many more know him by, the Unabomber. Now, Ted Kaczynski was a mathematics professor at University of California, Berkeley in the late 60s. He had only been teaching for a few years before a surprise resignation in 1969, where he went home to live with his parents in Illinois. Two years after that, he relocates to a small cabin in Montana to live a more natural life by himself. His self-sustaining natural life came to a halt in 1983 when during the summer he had a revelation when he saw that one of his favorite wilderness spots had a roadway placed through the center. Devastated, he decided rather than continue on working on his survival skills, he would focus on getting back at the system. Focus on revenge. Prior to his infamy with the various bombs he mailed to people, he started with smaller acts such as attempting to sabotage the industrial and urbanizing sites near his residence in Montana. This fact, along with the living arrangements and his hatred towards industrialization, I think are the clues we need to compare these two. Neither apparently wanted much to do with the rest of the world, and when they noticed their sanctuaries begin to slip from their control into the government's hands, they decide to take action. Now, much of our fictional Wayne Gorski's life is unknown, however, I don't think we need to know much to see the resemblance. And with that concludes our look at the Gorski Cabin, a sad tale not unlike most stories we find in the Commonwealth, but the real-world parallels is what make this location just a bit creepier. I'm now posting multiple videos a week, so if you like what I do and would like to see more, please leave a like and consider subscribing, but more than anything, I just want to say thank you so much for being here with me today. Until next time.